We're live. Let's see how many people we get. <laughs> oh, it says the video has been removed. Hmm? This video has been removed. Yeah, I removed the uh, whatever. Now it's going to be. Now people are logging in. Akbar Rahman is logging in. Tell everybody to log back in. <laughs> so, let's see. Yeah, we've been live, but it's not updating. I'm very good. Brother of uh, Akbar. Yalla, I think uh, everybody should log in and out to uh, the channel. We had some issue. You know how it is these days. Supposed to be live. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Akbar is the only one that found it. Hold on, Akbar. I have to tell everybody to log in and out. In and out, in and out. Akbar is fast. <laughs> it's an amazing kid. All right, so. Oh, no, people are coming back now. Wa alaikum salam, everybody. So, people are barely logging back in. The old link is not working no more. Hmm? The old link you sent earlier is not working. No, it, they just the subscription to the channel. Oh, you yeah, subscribe to the channel? Yeah. Okay. So if you're subscribed to the channel, then you should be good. So let me subscribe to the channel, then you should be good. So let me subscribe to the channel, then you should be good. Yeah, the, the video quality looks good. <laughs> <laughs> So I think if they're not subscribed, they won't be able to see. Wow. So we got 13 people logged in so far. Yeah, I'll... I'll... Allah. I think uh, people have not found uh, the uh, YouTube. I told them to subscribe. I told everybody to subscribe. And once they click on their subscription, they will see it right there. Wa alaikum salam, Abdul Halim. Wa alaikum salam, Jamila. Akbar, wa alaikum salam, Dania. Wa alaikum salam. MashaAllah. Halima, jazakumullah khairan, all two. So we'll get going as soon as we get 
I hope uh, people find it. You have to subscribe to find me. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, the whole time I'm just answering messages. Everybody's, where is this? Where is that? It's not going to come knock on you on your uh, screen. So let's see what ha what's happening here. Okay. So I don't, okay, I guess it's going to take us a little bit of time to, to start. So sorry for you guys who are on time. There we go. I hope the... Okay, guys, Dania and Akbar, if you hold up on the chat, so um, we leave space for everybody to participate. And if Ahmed, Ahmed Yaqubi, if you are if you are able to log in, just give me a thumbs up or salam or something, so make sure this thing is working. Yeah, as soon as I click the link, I see myself live. So let's check this one again. Ya Allah. It's good. Okay. Ahmed, stop texting me my phone. <laughs> I can't be looking too much on my phone and doing a lecture all at the same time. See, as soon as I click on the link I sent the first time, I come on live. Right. Can you try it? Yeah, I'm here too. Uh, cool. Yeah, subscribe. Hmm? Yeah, subscribe. Yeah. I think uh, Abu Mustafa is telling me that he can see me without being subscribed. Well, living room fire stick. Yeah. <laughs> That's a... Yeah, you can do it without subscription. Really? Yeah. Cool. Well, here we are. People keep sending me messages. <laughs> No, they, they say, I, 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 I like your setup. I like they, they comment on what they see on the screen, but they comment on my phone. <laughs> Okay. I wish we had audio and, and YouTube so I can have uh, Brother Jibreel read Quran for us as he does all the time. Ya yeah, Allah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. All right. I think I should get going with the. Uh, our lecture today and um, as usual we start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi al-kareem Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man tabi'am bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen Allahumma ajma'na wa iyaum fi jannati al-khirdawsi Allahumma amin as usual as I said we start with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom we praise whom we are so grateful to have made us Muslims to have given us this opportunity Together again. I am here broadcasting to you um, live from uh, Masjid Al Huda near on University Avenue. And um, I've been coming to this Masjid for many years now, every Saturday night, alhamdulillah. It's been a, it's been a, a great opportunity. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we ask Him to, and we ask Him to bless and honor and reward our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and uh, reward his family, his companions, and those who followed his footsteps. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us together with them in Al-Jannah, the highest part of Al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Uh, we are in these days still on lockdown. The masajid are closed. A lot of businesses are opening slowly. And the country in turmoil, you all know what happened. So we're going to be just getting back slowly to our schedule and want to discuss a few things while we are here. I know Jamila is saying that uh, the kids love each, seeing each other in, on Zoom. Well, when I was on Zoom, <laughs> what happened is I have to constantly keep muting the microphones because the kids are kids. They're they keep talking and yelling and, and trying to get my attention, each other's attention. Some, some of them will distract each other. So, um, and then we had the, the 100 limit. I, I was going to upgrade to more uh, participants, but today I chose to go with, with YouTube because, you know, I can take questions, um, uh, you know, on, um, on the chat log. So we can take written questions instead of uh, giving people microphone. I'll be, you know, jumping on each other. Yeah, kids are kids. I mean, I don't blame them. So... These days, you're all locked, up, locked down. I know that many of you are very bored and you are just sick of being home. And that's something that we all feel. We all feel the same way. But sometimes life comes at you with things that you don't expect or you don't want. And for that reason, you have to be wise enough to know how to handle the situation and have the best outcome. And as usual, we always look into our history and learn what happens in such situations. Abshir, I can't focus on If you can just close that door and sit over there because I just can't get my thoughts through. I think I'm a bad case of attention deficit. <laughs> See, when you hear you flip the pages, it just throws me off. Either I have a big crowd to work with here, or just the one person I... Am I going to talk to you or talk to everybody online? Because <laughs> uh, Brother Abshir is helping me here at the masjid. He's been always helpful when we do our setup. But today, he's here in the same <laughs> He's trying to study for something, so subhanAllah. <clears throat> so I'll tell you um, a very interesting story of someone very influential in our history, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have been on lockdown now for three months. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been on lockdown for three years one time. Three years. Imagine three years, not three months, three years. I, told, I think I told the story when the Kuffar of Quraysh, they didn't want to deal with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims anymore. And they decided to put him in exile. And they went out in the desert, in a valley in the desert, and they locked everybody up. Basically, they, will arrest, they were arresting Muslims and put them in the valley, not allowing them to go anywhere, not allowing them to do business or buy food or buy water. Basically, they wanted to starve them to death. Imagine, three years, many Sahaba became very sick. A lot of elderly were very weak. How can you survive three years in the desert? Literally with just barely water and food, barely trickling down because they had to smuggle it into their camp three years they said that they were so hungry that one sahabi said i saw the sahaba dig in the ground and pull roots out of you know from the ground and chew on dried roots so hopefully they can fill their bellies with something another sahabi said i was walking in the desert desperate for any food until i found an old piece of skin of a camel just skin 
dried skin, which we call today leather. And I was chewing on it, hoping to find some satisfaction. Three years, they were, they had barely any food, barely any water. So subhanAllah, it's not easy to just go about your day and say, oh, I'm, I start complaining, uh, you know, I'm bored, I can't, I can't go to school, I can't go to the mall, I can't go to the gym, I can go to the park and go play, I can't do nothing. And your um, excuse is what? Well, or your solution is to go play some video games. Now, many of you are becoming more addicted to video games and entertainment, and you're not using your time wisely. Remember, Sahaba used to go pick up rocks and put them on their stomachs, on their bellies, and then tie their turbans, or, you know, to you know, pushing the rock in 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 their in their stomachs. Hopefully, that they will you know quench the or, or or calm the hunger, because when the body becomes very hungry and it runs out of energy, it starts breaking down its own tissue. I mean, slowly you start breaking down, you know, proteins. And then you start losing muscle mass and then you start losing, you know, bone density and then everything becomes miserable. It is a very, very sad. They said that one day Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma, they came to the Prophet sallallahu and they showed him that they were very hungry and they had rocks, one rock each on their belly. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi exposed his belly and told them, look, I have two rocks on my belly for three years. Nowadays, it's different. Actually, in this lockdown, we are getting fat because we have plenty of food. You get bored and you start eating. You have nothing to do and you start eating. So, be very careful. How should I deal with the lockdown? Very simple. Have a daily program. Have a daily program. Take a piece of paper and write yourself a program. Your achievements that you want to uh, you know, um, get done by the end of the day or by the end of the week. It will help you, but at the same time, you will learn something. Let's take another example from someone who was locked up many times. I mentioned this person in Khutbat uh, al shortly. We're going to talk about a man who loved to speak the truth. But he was not addicted to video games. He was addicted to knowledge. His name is Taqiyuddin Abu al-Abbas. Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim ibn Abdul Salam ibn Taymiyyah al-Hurrani. He's famous for being called ibn Taymiyyah. He was born, or he, you know, about 780 years ago. And lots of scholars took, he took from a lot of scholars, a lots of knowledge. He studied under of around 200 scholars. Anybody who was good at something, he would go and study with them. He was a young boy growing up and learning where his father, you know, took him to Damascus, Dimashq in Sham, um, where his father also was studying. One day when he was seven years old, his Qur'an teacher, his shaykh, told him, if you finish the Qur'an, or you finish this part of the Qur'an, you memorize it, I will give you 40 dirham, 40 dirham. That's a good amount. And then this young seven years old kid said, I promised Allah that I will never get paid for the Qur'an, for reciting, memorizing, or anything. He loved to read and memorize at a lot of young age. And my question to you, boys and girls, do you love to read and memorize? Do you love to spend time seeking some knowledge? Or do you spend time playing that game over and over and over again? <sighs> One day when he was just a teenage boy, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, I want you to remember this name because when you grow up, inshallah, you will encounter uh, lots of his writings and lots of his books because he had written so many books. 
When he was a teenager, his friend said, let's go on a picnic. Let's go somewhere. He said, no, I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm going to stay here in the masjid. So they went, they had fun, they played, I don't know, they fished, they played ball or whatever. When they came back in the evening, they told them, oh my God, you missed out. The weather was so beautiful and we did this and we did that all kind of fun. And he looked at them and he said, well, what did you benefit? Often entertaining yourselves and having so much fun. What did you benefit? They said, we had fun. The purpose of going out is just to have fun. He told them, while you guys were having fun, look at this book. I memorized it all from start to finish because his mind was so trained to memorize and understand and grasp this knowledge. He had no problem reading and memorizing. So what can I say? This man, he grew up to be a young man and he didn't care much about clothing. He didn't care much about, you know, you know, transportation, like, you know, I see some of you guys, you know, as soon as you become 18 years old, do you go get yourself into a loan to have a, a nice car? And like this guy was like, dude, I brought a, bought a BMW. I said, can you afford one? He said, no, no, I took a loan. I said, stock for the loan. I took a loan to buy a car. He, said, he says, yeah, but do you have $20? I cannot afford gas. He had to borrow money to put gas in his car just because he wanted to show off. No, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, who lived over 780 years ago, it's amazing. It is amazing that we are still talking about him. How many rich people, famous people, popular people have lived and died and nobody remembers them? But the Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, look, we're all talking about him. Right? So, so um, imagine, imagine as uh, Brother Isam is saying that the profanity and the violence that is being portrayed in those video games is crazy. Instead, open a book and read. What was the first word to be revealed in the Quran? You all know Iqra, and Iqra means read. We are the Ummah that's supposed to read because knowledge is hidden in books, not in video games or prank videos. Yeah, I watch funny cats videos. I watch funny dogs about once a month or once every two months. They're cute, yeah, blah, 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 a minute or two. No problem but you don't see me go to YouTube the whole time like imagine you play video game for five six hours and then you your mom tells you put down that game and you say okay and then guess what you turn on YouTube and you start watching somebody else playing that game how much of an addicted person you can be but when you grow up and somebody asks you simple information or I ask you now how long you've been struggling to to memorize just just Amma you'll be looking I don't know well guess what your brain is too addicted to that stuff video games are very addictive they're like drugs Al imam ibn taymiyyah one time he was walking in the in the streets of damascus and an old man asked him you know can you spare something like something for food or um you know something to eat he didn't have nothing to give him because this man didn't care much about dunya all he cared about is knowledge and he did not know he's going to be this famous that you and i are talking about him you know you know it Almost eight centuries later, this man, or young man, he took off his coat. He hid because he didn't want to expose his body. And he gave away his clothing to someone who's poorer than him. And he started writing books about fatawa. The, you know, when people ask questions to this mashayikh, all his answers were, were, were recorded in books so they don't get lost in memory. And the, the kitab, the, 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 the encyclopedia of fatawa is huge. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. You can have it. You can. You can. You can find it in many uh, online or in many places. And um, he used to be um, very brave, Ibn Taymiyyah, because he did not waste his time. <sighs> he did not waste his time. You know what he did? When the Tatar, which is the Mughals, the Mughals, when they invaded almost the whole planet. They will go kill everybody and, burp and set fire to everything. And when the Mughals were attacking the Muslims, he would encourage people to go and resist them. And one day, when the Muslims were fighting the Tatar, he asked the commander, he says, I want to go fight and protect Damascus from these attacks. And, and, and he told him, tell me, where is the, the most dangerous part of this battle? 
He told him over there. He says, okay, I'm going to go over there. He asks for the dangerous spot. No, he didn't want to be in the back hiding. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be chilling like, you know, like peanuts or something. Oh, you guys go fight. I'll be watching you from here. Oh, I'll be shooting from far. No, no. This guy was very, very brave. But at the same time, he had a battle to fight against the enemies of Islam, but he had a battle to fight against people who were envious of him. When you do something good in your life and you excel, trust me, people will be jealous of you. It's just the way it is. Sometimes you feel like you're, you're in a bad situation. You have a lot of problems. Still, people are jealous of you. Why? Because it's human nature. And unfortunately, a lot of Muslims are jealous. So, a lot of people who were scholars who, would, who sold their souls to the kings or whatever were against him. At a young age of in his 20s, people ask him, what do you think about this or that? He will give them his honest opinion and he would get arrested for it. Subhanallah, nowadays in many Muslim countries, people tell their opinions and they get arrested for it. Duh, because history repeats itself. He got locked up 21 times. 21 times. First time he got locked up was in Alexandria, in Al Iskandaria in Egypt, Misr. Ah. They locked him up for seven months and they were threatening him to send him in exile to Cyprus in this island. And simply because he spoke the truth, he spoke his opinion. But when the um, new king took, took power, his name Al-Malik Al-Nasir Muhammad Ibn Qalawun. Al-Nasir Muhammad, when he realized that a lot of scholars were talking bad about Ibn Taymiyyah, they were to put him in jail. They wanted to lock him up and everything. He, 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 he knew that he was a good scholar. He told him, you are my friend. I trust you. And I know a lot of people hate you, are envious of you. And I know what they tried to get rid of you. Now, let me put all of them in jail and punish them. Give me permission and I will ask, I will, I will execute all of them. But Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he told him, no, I forgive them he forgave his enemies subhanallah then he moved bet between countries teaching you know 21 times went to jail 21 times so after going to jail for 21 times i mean during that time one time, his students went to visit him in his prison because he would not kiss up to anyone. He would tell the truth. He had so much knowledge, spent his youth reading and memorizing and learning. So he had too much knowledge to be a fake sheikh. So what he said, they went to him and they said, Oh, sheikh, we feel so sorry for you that you are in jail. We feel so sorry that you're not out there, you know, teaching. So Ibn al-Qayyim uh, said about him, um, he said that Ibn, I heard Ibn Taymiyyah say, ما يصنع بأعدائي أنا جنتي وبستاني في صدري أين رحت فهي معي لا تفارقني إن حبسي خلوة وقتلي شهادة وإخراجي من بلدي سياحة He told them when they were feeling sorry for him being, in, being locked up not able to go places, you know, in jail, very bad food, no air conditioning, no heat, no nothing. I mean, just very, they didn't have no beds. They will just sleep on, on, the, on the floor. Very miserable situation. When they asked him, we feel sorry for you, he answered them. Ibn al-Qayyim narrates, he says, how can my enemies hurt me? My paradise, my jannah is in my, is in my chest, is in my heart. My paradise goes with me everywhere I go. If they kill me, I die as shaheed, as a martyr. And if they lock me up, it's for me, it's seclusion. So I can find more time to worship Allah and study more and write more. And if they exile me from my country, I will consider it as tourism. No matter, what, no matter how bad the situation could be, Al-Imam Ibn Taymiyyah saw it as a positive thing because nothing would put him down he was always positive after going to jail how many times 
21 times. And after, with all these struggles, with all these struggles, he used to say in his sujood when he makes sajda in his prayer, Allahumma inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. He says, oh Allah, help me to, to remember you more or better and, and to thank you more and better and to worship you more and better. I'm, I'm honestly blown away with the quality of this character. One time he was talking to his students, look at this wisdom in his words. No matter what the situation is, you always stay positive and you make the best out of it. And you don't start complaining and looking at your parents and make their lives miserable just because you are such a spoiled brat that you want the world to be perfect for you and you are never satisfied. There are a lot of people nowadays who are locked up or locked down because of the, the pandemic we live through. But the problem is there's nobody to bring them food and there's nobody bringing them blood to bring them water. People are either dying from the virus or dying from hunger. We can't be too comfortable. We have to be very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make the best out of our times and be positive. Ibn Taymiyyah one time told one of his students, Ibn al Qaymi says, You know who's locked down? Al Mahbusu man habasa qalbahu an rabbihi ta'ala, wal ma'suru man asara hawa, man asara hu hawa. Let me translate. He says, The jailed person, the real, you know, locked up person, is someone whose heart is locked up from remembering his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the prisoners, and the prisoner is the one who is imprisoned to his desires. He cannot stop his desires. He cannot control himself or herself. You know, whatever they feel like they have to have. I feel like playing a video game, play, 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 play the whole time. That's a real prisoner. La ilaha illallah. <sighs> One day they took him in jail, to jail, and his students would go visit him. And you know what he did in his jail? He found that the prisoners were wasting time. Well, we're just locked up here waiting for our sentence to finish so we can get out of here. He told them, you are wasting your time. Let's turn this prison into a school. He transformed the prison into a school. So he was teaching the prisoners the basics of their deen. And how to be a better Muslim. La ilaha illallah. He said he was having them memorize Quran. And these criminals became good people through his actions. He's in a very bad situation, but he made the best out of it. Always stay positive. You are not locked up for three years like the Prophet ﷺ. And you did not go to jail 21 times like Imam Ibn Taymiyyah that we all remember. You know what he used to say? He used to say, Inna fi dunya jannah. In this dunya, there is paradise. There is one, a paradise in this dunya. Man lam yadkhulha, la yadkhulu jannat al -akhira. Whosoever does not enter the jannah of this dunya may not enter the, dun the jannah of this akhirah. What kind of jannah we have here? He said, فَسُبْحَانَ مَنْ أَشْهَدَ عِبَادَهُ جَنَّتَهُ قَبْلَ لِقَائِهِ وفتح لهم أبوابها في دار العمل فأتاهم من روحها ونسيمها وطيبها وطيبها ما استفرغ قواهم لطلبها والمسابقة إليه says praise be to Allah who had given us part of the Jannah here in the dunya the part of Jannah for him for Imam Ibn Taymiyyah is the ability to worship Allah he says give glad tidings to those whom Allah have shown the way and I'm giving them the pleasure of worshiping him. And they feel the satisfaction of being slaves and worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how you get to taste the dunya here. I'm sorry, the jannah here in the dunya before 
you go to al akhira al imam ibn taymiyyah they is the authorities one time they found him in jail all he asks for no food no clothing no comfort no beds no comforters no temper pedic mattresses none of the comfort stuff all he was asking for he was asking for paper and pens and ink why because he after they removed all the books from him, he could no longer read. He started reading from his memory. Remember when I said he was young, he memorized so many books. He said, if they remove the books from in front of you, where are you going to get the information from? Well, guess what? He had it from his head. He started writing from his head. He would write on a lot of books on this paper. And then and, and the authorities, the jailers, they hated that. They said, <clears throat> we cannot let him have it. We are going to remove the paper, the pen. And the ink. So what did Ibn Taymiyyah do? He started asking the guards for charcoal. You know the leftovers from the burning fire when, you know, um, when, they put, uh, when, when they had fires in the winter, he would tell them, give me the leftover charcoals. And they'll just hand it to him. What is he going to do with it? Well, he started writing on the walls of that jail. When you look inside his jail cell, it's literally all covered with knowledge. He said, hopefully somebody after me will come to this jail and find something to read. These people were readers. And you all know, I hope you do, readers are leaders. <sighs> Last time he was in jail, he finished the Quran 81 times he recited the Quran 81 times and the last time he 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 he, he was recited the Quran he got to surah he says inna lil mutta inna al muttaqina fi jannatin wa nuhur fi maq'adi sidqin 'inda malikin muqtadir Allah says in the Quran that those who have taqwa who have the, who observe Allah's rules who have iman and piety they have a very special place in paradise between rivers and gardens in a place of truth near their creator who is most powerful and that's when he died in the ninth of Jumada al akhir al ukhra in the year 728 <clears throat> 728 hijri which is the Muslim calendar after the migration of the Prophet ﷺ. When he died and, and the authorities, the, the rulers found out that he passed away. They opened the cell so that his students can take his body and bury him. And when they brought the janazah, they, thought, they saw that hundreds of thousands of people went to his funeral. A man who made the best of a bad situation Al-Imam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah Now you tell me What are you going to make out of your situation? It's time For us to change our behavior And invest in ourselves by seeking knowledge And not wasting time when you grow up and want to find a job, nobody's going to ask you how good you are playing video games. When you die and go face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's not going to ask you about your video games. He's going to ask you about your salat first, your prayer. I know some of you, they uh, don't do salat on time because they're busy playing video games. Am I right or wrong? <sighs> he's going to ask you about your Quran, how you treated your parents now that you are stuck at home with them, are you making it easy for them, helping them, cleaning with them, making it easy for everybody? Or you become a burden because your royal highness cannot stand being locked up at home that is air conditioned, that is nice and warm, that has all the food in the world, that has all the entertainment in the world, and still you're not happy. Shame on you if you're like that.
shame on you. So let's learn a lesson from an Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. A lot of people nowadays who are in jail, they use the time to memorize the whole Quran. A lot of people become Muslim inside the prison system. And they, may, they use that time to memorize Quran, to, be, to, to become better people. They use that time to read books. And many of them got degrees, college degrees from the jail. So you have plenty of time now. Please do me a favor. Actually, do yourselves a favor. Get a piece of paper and write down. Stay positive. Use your time wisely. And start a program. Write down a program you hang in front of you. When are you going to exercise? When you're going to play? When you're going to study? When you're going to memorize? When you're going to pray? Everything in a schedule so you know where you're going. If you wake up without a schedule, you will just be all over the place and you will be miserable with no achievements. Now, I'll read your comments. And uh, I think Dania is telling me here, but if uh, he, don't, he doesn't feed himself or be strong, then how he's supposed to write knowledge and spread it? Look, when you are too busy writing important books that survive, they are surviving now over thousands of years in the future, food for them becomes trivial. They eat the very minimum. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that he was starving, that he would not eat at all or anything. I'm saying that um, he, he was not his first priority. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read your chats now. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah husna. Welcome. Husna al Hussein, how are you doing? I am doing very well, my brother. Jazakumullah khairan. Isam said, uh, Jazakumullah for bringing up for this subject up. Uh, not only our kids are playing video games and watching hours on YouTube, right, on how to play these games, but also these games are filled with violence and profanity. I mentioned that earlier. Go ahead. Send your questions uh, via chat before we move on, inshallah. Or I will just move on while I'm looking at the chat here. Go ahead, Akbar. Allah, Allah. So... Lots of great people in history have endured a worse situation than we are going through, yet they made the best out of it. Um, you all know the story. Why did he go to jail? Um, I don't know if it's uh, Zaid who's uh, asking this question or Ferdos or Hussein himself. Um, uh, I, I said in the beginning of the lecture that Imam Ibn Taymiyyah had very strong opinions and he would not tolerate bid'ah in the deen. So people who are, mashallah Zaid. So when they were doing things against the deen of Islam, against things that the Prophet Sallallahu did not teach and they start inventing stuff, you know, he was very vocal against them. He did not like that. And, and uh, that's how he had a lot of enemies and they started, you know, um, uh, to to try to get him to jail and so on. Hamza, how did he memorize the book in two hours? Well, he didn't, I didn't say he memorized the book in two hours. So they left for the whole day playing and, you know, in that picnic. But we know that he had a great ability to memorize because his mind was clean. He was interested in the, the knowledge, not the, the video games that you all playing all day long. You wait, I know you spend, many of you spend four or five hours on the video game. If you spend just one hour trying to memorize something, your brain will be trained to memorize. So try it. Because they did try. <clears throat> you all know the story of uh, Nabiullah Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf. He was also wrongfully jailed. He was an innocent man who was put, to, put in jail, but he preferred to go to jail and not 
um, uh, fall into haram. I will explain in a second. So Ahmed says here, remind the kids as uh, summer is coming to use their time wisely. Like you said, Quran memorization, have a program like you said, and set goals. How much Quran they memorize during the break school? Well, mashallah. Uthman Tahir says, Yeah, mashallah. He says it, it, it says here that we can fast and eat healthy. That's very interesting. Mashallah, I'm very proud of you. Uh, Muhammad Hadji Abdi says, could you do more lectures like this, please? We will be here, inshallah, next week. Oh, I'm supposed to be on vacation. <sighs> but here we are, alhamdulillah, trying to make the best out of a bad situation. Not as bad as other places, but I cannot complain. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Yusuf alayhi salam, as I told you, people are jealous of you. Just like, imagine his own brothers. His own brothers were jealous of him. And, they, and you all know the story, they decided to get rid of him. So they wanted to kill him, but you know, they didn't have the guts to, so they just put him in a... In a well somewhere lost, and they told his father that we beep, lost him. You know, some wild animal ate him. Uh, we'll see about that, Hussein. I you know, was it about the Zoom thing because uh, YouTube has its own uh, advantages, and I know uh, uh, what you call it. Uh, Zoom is also good, but. Um, let me read uh, Jamila saying here. Yes, I agree. Prioritizing and days is great. Also help our mental state and kids. How should we address what's going on in the world to our kids? I'm not sure if you addressed it earlier. No, I didn't uh, address it, Jamila. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it, inshallah, uh, in my next segment. Look, Hamza is telling me, yeah, that would be better. We don't have to write. Oh, my God. You don't even want to write a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> she just want to click and talk. <laughs> I'm telling you to start reading books and memorize Quran and you're complaining that you cannot even re write a sentence. <laughs> that is funny. No, just because of your comment, Hamza, I will do on YouTube next time. So you have to write. Start writing. By the way, writing is one of my best hobbies. I love to write. If you write your own journal, and read it months or years later, you will discover so many things about yourself and how you changed or evolved. Write. Please write. Try to write just one paragraph a day. Learn how to write correctly so I don't have to read your mistakes on the chat log. Be careful. I was saying um, <clears throat> that Yusuf, السلام, he was locked up for 18 years just because he didn't want to do something haram. There was a person so powerful who offered him something haram. Not talk about that another time. And he said in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, you know what he says? He says, oh Allah, jail. Oh, he said, I prefer to go to jail than do what they want me to do. And guess what? They took him to jail. 18 years. 18 years in jail. For a crime he did not commit, but he never complained. And guess what? We all are talking about Yusuf alayhi salam. We all remember him. Why? Because of how he lived. As I always tell you, everybody dies, but not everybody lives. Yeah. You think just... Because you exist and play video games and watch sitcoms and movies all day long that you think you're alive? You are truly alive when your life, your actions make, it e make, make life better for others. That's when you're really alive. You're alive when other rem others remember you after you die. And we spoke about Ibn Taymiyyah almost 800 years ago, remember him. Yusuf alayhi salam, I don't even know how many years, <laughs> over a thousand years or something, <laughs> we were talking about because of it. He refused to do haram and chose to go to jail instead. La ilaha illallah. You see, nowadays, there are crazy things happening in the news. You all know what's happening in the news with the riots, with the looting, with the police. 
It is very unfortunate that we see people looting. But in my opinion, these looters, they want to distract the attention of the country from the real issues of racism. As I said before, America is going through a pandemic for the last few months and another pandemic for the last 400 years. That pandemic is racism. La ilaha illallah. So, all I can tell you in these times to use your time wisely, be smart, be vigilant, and be careful. Don't act like crazy because some there are people out there who are crazy and they're happy with their little guns and everything. So you don't wanna you don't wanna be in those situations. You wanna be wise and smart and focus on what matters the most. You know what matters is your deen, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You pray your time, you pray your, your prayer salat on time, you make it easy for your parents. And you become the best child they ever dreamed of. I want your parents to look at you and say, Alhamdulillah, I have this type of, I have this kind of child. Not like, oh my God, you don't read, you don't pray on time, you can't sit, you this, you No, no, I want them to be proud of you because it's your decision to make your parents proud of you. Never mind what's happening out there. You have to focus on your goals. So let me go to the chats here. And see, my brother Khalid is here. Jazakallah Khalid, barakallah feek. May Allah reward you and bless your kids. What is AIC? I don't know. There's something, is it? AC, ASC, Sheik Yonas. Wow. Ahmed Abdi. Write something I can understand. There is, uh, mashallah, uh, Sam Larash. She said that some moms put their kids on video games. So That's called a... Um, Electronic babysitter. <laughs> they just want to get ready of them. Um, uh, Akbar says, uh, what was the name of the Sahabi who went to jail? I was talking about uh, a, a, a scholar. His name is Ibn Taymiyyah. Research him. Ibn Taymiyyah. This is is going to take. Can you please say that for three times? Ibn Taymiyyah one, Ibn Taymiyyah two, Ibn Taymiyyah three, Mr. Akbar. Right, did there? I'm not, let me just let me just. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna write it like Ibn Taymiyyah. I just wrote for you, uh, Mister Akbar. Thank you for your question. Say Alhamdulillah for your parents. That's very true, Hannah. Mashallah. Hey, it's a short way saying Salam. <laughs> Short of saying salam alaikum. A S C. Akbar, that's not a Sahabi. That's a, that's a scholar. It's not a Sahabi. Sahaba lived fourteen hundred years ago. This man lived about seven hundred eighty years ago. So, la ilaha illallah. Yeah, we 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 are going through some crazy times these days. But I want you to focus on what matters the most: your prayer your Quran, and reading. Video games, YouTube, funny videos and pranks are not going to help you in the future. You will regret wasting this time. Most of you are young and your minds are still fresh so you can memorize more Quran. Wait until you grow up past your 20s and then you try to memorize Quran. It's just not going to get in here. I'm sorry to say that. Uh... What is the best cure to boredom? Best cure to boredom is a program. Make yourself a program that will keep you busy. And the program cannot be, you know, you know, useless things. It has to be something that you feel like you achieved something. Put yourself that you're going to memorize half a page of the Quran a day. Imagine this half a page. I know m many of you can do more than one page. So you... Um, you, you, you set that goal. I will memorize half a page of the Quran every day or a third of a page or a quarter page. And once you, you push yourself to have discipline to do that, by the end of the day, you are not going to be bored because you feel like you achieved something. How come you're bored? You have a, a fridge full of food. You have your mom and your dad making your life as best as they can do. You have TV, you have internet, you have a phone, you have a video game, and you are still bored. That means you're not achieving anything. You are only bored if you're not achieving anything. You have to set yourself goals that feel like an achievement. 
memorize or read yourself some books. How about some push-ups? How about some exercise? I say, my goal tomorrow is to clean this part of the house. Do it by yourself and take a picture, post it to your family and feel proud of it because you are doing something productive. That's how you avoid being bored. Nothing else. Let me take a look at the... Um, he says, uh, my, uh, Khalid says, my son uh, Hamid is asking, why should we pray at the age of nine? Isn't it too young? Actually, we pray at the age of seven. Okay. Ahmed or Hamid, I'm sorry. Esam says, help my mom wash dishes. That's <laughs> awesome. Let me, let me answer uh, uh, Ahmed first. Ahmed, why do we have to pray at the age of nine? Again, we have to pray at the age of seven. We have to start. Because when you start something when you are very young, there are two things, very, very important things. Number one, because you will get used to it at a young age, so you will never stop it. And number two, that you are going to start earning the rewards from Allah at a very young age. Imagine if you start praying at 20, so you already wasted like 13 years. Those 13 years, you could have earned yourself a lot of reward with Allah. Someone who started praying at seven, is he equal to someone who starts praying at 70? Think about it, Ahmed. Someone who starts praying very early is better than someone who starts praying very late. And the more you pray, the better you, be, you, you, you become at it. And there is one thing I want to tell you, Mr. Ahmed. Listen to me carefully. Who created you? Allah. Hmm. Who gave you these amazing parents of yours? This beautiful house? All the things you want and wish for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all he's asking you in return is to pray. Five times a day takes you a couple of minutes. And that prayer actually good for your body. Physically, it's good for your body. Good for your soul, for your mind to clear it down, to calm down. Do you think prayer is too much in return for everything Allah had given us? And guess what? That prayer is your key to paradise. Because if you do not pray or you pray badly... Allah is not even going to look at you. Because the first thing Allah will ask us about, He says, the Prophet ﷺ says that the prayer, salat, namaz, is the main pillar of Islam. If the namaz is not good, everything else is not good. So be careful. Let me read some of the other chats here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Learn new skills. Islam says, seek your true passion. We will not have this much time available again once we get out of this lockdown, inshallah. That's true. Most of us will not have this much time on our hands after this is all over. Akbar says, or this actually Daniel says, so today's lecture basically means to utilize your time and always progress and ignore people who are jealous and make schedules, which I will inshallah tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. Dania, mashallah, you are so smart. You're not only very beautiful, you're also very smart, mashallah. I'm so proud of you because you just summarized my lecture right there. Everybody, if you can copy paste that uh, comment that uh, Dania posted, it summarizes the lecture basically. Uh, okay, so we are getting closer to Salatul Maghrib. And let me check exactly what time is the Adhan. It's going to be around. 52 days. Let me count the minutes. Mean challenge by using you on you. I don't know. I'm so bad at math like this. Now I'm just kidding. It's about, it's about 10 minutes. Um, uh, Uthman Tahir says, uh, he says here, Alia, of course, Alia always help mom cleaning. Thank you. Sure, thank you too. Allah, Allah. Um, so, um, any other questions or comments? I don't know exactly what's happening to Rahma, Brother Nasser. You can uh, check with the brothers over there. I don't have the latest information about that. All I know it's it's um, it's it's closed now. But the the YouTube channel we created many years ago is open. 
Okay, uh, Omar Farouk or whoever is on his chance is a uh, bit off topic. Let's see. How do we handle the situation when our very loved and close ones are suffering COVID in back home and cannot take it? Oh, Allah. Brother, this is very, very tough. Yeah, my, some of my family members, you know, contracted COVID-19 and it's very hard, you know, to, it, it's, it's very, very bad. But let me tell you something. Hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Dawu mardakum bis sadaqat. Try, heal, heal your, the sick ones in your family through sadaqah. Give sadaqah as much as you can, either to these family members who are sick, it's also considered sadaqah, or to other people who, who are in need and make dua for them. I know you cannot travel to take care of them. It's very hard. It's not an easy situation. May Allah make it easy on you and, and give them shifa and healing. What else can you do? Dua, my brother. Dua and sadaqah. Dua and sadaqah. Dua and sadaqah. Go back to Allah because honestly, Allah is the only one we have in this life. Maghrib is going to be in, in, uh, in uh, 7.52 in about 12 minutes, inshallah. Let me read what's going on here. Omar Farouk. Omar Farouk. Allah, may Allah help you, brother. I feel your pain. Akbar Rahman, uh, when is Maghrib? I said, uh, uh, you know, in about 12 minutes, 10, 12 minutes. Sister Jamila says, hey, mashallah, thank you. Yes, planning your day is great. And remember, don't beat yourself if you miss something in your day's agenda. Mashallah, very good because we are not robots. We're human beings. It's okay to miss one, one things. But what's not okay is not to have a plan. Whenever you have a plan, you will succeed both in your school, both in your life, both in your career, both in your deen. Always have a plan. We will talk about this, inshallah, having plans according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My friend Jibreel is in the house, mashallah. Um, ACS. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yeah, let, me, let me go back to Khalid Ayyub. My dear brother, we, uh, we never meet in Germany. Jazakallah khair and thank you so much for your beautiful words. Jamila reminded us to pray to fast six days of Shawwal. Uh, let me, we still have 15 days. Mashallah, Jazakallah khair and thank you very much. Tomorrow is Monday. It's one of the white middle days of the mo lunar month. I recommend everybody to be fasting tomorrow. And if you have not started already, do your six days of Shawwal. The reason for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the Quran that every good deed you do will bring you 10 good deeds multiplied by 10. So you just fasted the whole month of Ramadan, which means you get 10 months. Well, how about the, 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 the remaining two months? Well, if you fast six days of Shawwal, that means 60. Allah will reward you for 60. So 60 days is two months. You add those two months to the whole to the year you already considered fasting. The Prophet ﷺ says, if you fast six days of Shawwal, you will be considered as you fasted the whole year. Imagine Allah rewards you for fasting the whole year. That's amazing. Allah is so generous. So do not forget to fast the six days of Shawwal. Jazakillahu khayran. Ya Jamila. So we go back to my first and then tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. Oh, sorry. Tomorrow, I said tomorrow is Monday. Tomorrow is Sunday. Uh, you know, I recommend Monday, Thursdays, but it's okay. You can pray tomorrow, Sunday, no problem. You can fast. Next lecture, how many is asking about uh, spider power? What is the spider para? What is that? He's currently in his para and wants to know story behind its stars. Spider para? I'm not sure what that means. Fasting is, type of, fasting is a type of ibadah, of worship in Allah. So I, I, I don't know what that is. It says, if you fail to, um, and Islam says, if you fail to plan. Okay, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Wow, that's amazing. If you fail to plan, well, that's your plan for failure. Thank you for these amazing reminders. Amin, amin, amin. I think we're getting closer to the time of Salat. With this, I uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep all of you safe and healthy. Please make dua in your prayers for those who are sick, who have those who are suffering under tough situations with this uh, virus and the lockdown and other conditions. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you safe and healthy, keep your families blessed, and... سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى
وبركاته